Oh, hello. Nice to see you again. I was locked out of my locker. Wasn't trying to break into anyone else's locker at all. Anyways, my name is Ryan Sulak. Glad to see you. I'm your math instructor for the SAT Essentials video series. Now, welcome to your third and final math class. Yeah, that means in approximately one hour, in just one hour, you will have completed the basics of the SAT math section. Wow, I wish I had pyrotechnics. And that's an awesome first step to ensuring you do your best on the standardized test. Now, as you are sitting in front of the screen right now, I would imagine that you probably are not feeling emotions of extreme excitement like I am as you prepare for what is probably not one of the most straightforward, low-stress tests of your life. If you've told me those things were true, I would probably suggest you schedule a psychiatrist appointment because that would mean you must enjoy pain. Hey, <laughs> whatever you're into, but listen. I guess my point is what I'm trying to say is you probably don't want to be here, right? Studying for this exam, and I get it, which is why we try to make it as interesting and as engaging as possible. But please, when you start feeling frustrated, keep in mind what the SATs really mean. Super awesome test. SAT. Get it? It's awesome and it's a test. Anyways, practicing might suck, but at the same time, you're here because it's such an important part of college admission. The SATs or super awesome tests are one of the gateways to a great college which opens the door for so many awesome careers and other awesome things you guys are going to do with your life. So let's get through this. Together we'll drop kick this math section like it ain't no thing. And as you work your way through this video, try to keep up with me. I'm fast like a ninja or a mongoose. I need you to actively participate by working through the class problems with us and jotting down key notes like you've been doing this whole time. You in the back, you're starting to get better. I see you. You're making progress. That means you will need to arm yourself with a trusty notebook and a, and a pencil. So if you don't have them in front of you right now, just pause this lecture and go grab them. You ready? Okay, drum roll please. It's go time. Today's lecture is going to be all about geometry. Get this, about 30% of the questions on the math section will be geometry ones. That's like one in three almost. It also means that out of 800 points in the math section, about 270 points will be about geometry. So today, Let's make sure those 270 points are yours to get. The number one type of geometry questions tested relates to triangles. To answer these questions correctly, you need to know several important laws about triangles that all triangles obey. The first law I want to go over is the law of 180. This is just one of the rules that govern all triangles' lives, or else they get expelled and aren't allowed to be called a triangle anymore. All triangles have angles that add up to 180 degrees. So in our diagram below, angle X plus Y plus Z equals 180 degrees. But you already knew that, right? How about this one? Triangles also obey the law of proportions. This law says that the longest side of a triangle is opposite the largest angle in the triangle. So, in our diagram, side Z is the longest side because it is opposite angle B, which has to be the largest angle. This has to always be true. And the opposite has to always be true. The shortest side is opposite the smallest angle. So that means side Y, which is the smaller side, is opposite to angle A which must be the smallest angle. So that sounds straightforward, right? Okay, so let me ask you a question now. What if you have a triangle like where two of its angles are equal to each other? Do the opposite sides have to be equal too? The answer is yes, they absolutely do. So lines JK and lines KL are equal in length. This is an important fact that is going to help you on several SAT math questions. So remember it, it will be tested. 
Now let's talk about our trusty Pythagorean's theorem. Every high school student knows about this one. This theorem only relates to right triangles though, remember. Pythagoras discovered that if you square the length of the two shorter sides of a right triangle, it will always equal the square of the length of the longer side. So what does that mean? If you know any two sides of a right triangle, you can find the length of the third using this theorem. This is a cool theorem, so make sure you memorize it. However, it also takes kind of a long time to calculate, right? And you don't have that much time, so here's a shortcut I recommend. The SATs are going to test the same simple right triangle lengths over and over and over again, so instead of using the Pythagorean theorem every time, you should memorize the key triangle lengths that are going to repeat over and over again. This is a great way to save time. So, let's cover some popular right triangles that appear frequently on the SATs. Write this down right now. You want to memorize this side length set. 3, 4, 5, and 5, 12, 13. Right angles with these sides are very, very common on the SAT. Also, be on the lookout for multiples of these sets. Now, those are just the same sets in disguise. So, for example, 3, 4, 5 is one of our key sets, right? Well, so is 6, 8, 10, and 9, 12, 15. See? It's the same thing, but in disguise. Piece of cake, right? I want you to instantly recognize these sets. So, like for example, if I said to you, hey, what do you think of when I say three, four, blank? You should just jump up and say five. And that's when you give me a high five and I give you a high five and people start taking pictures and we become celebrities because you understand what I'm talking about. <sighs> so can you do that? Awesome, I'm counting on it. Get it, counting on it because three, four, five, Counting? That was a math joke. Now, let's talk about similar triangles. Aren't all these triangles similar? They all have pointy sides and kind of look the same, right? <laughs> well, don't be racist. Not all triangles are the same. So what makes two triangles technically similar? Well, there are two conditions. One, the three angles in the two triangles are exactly the same. And the second condition is the lengths of the sides of the two triangles are in proportion. Basically what this means is that the triangles are similar if they are basically the same triangle, except one is zoomed bigger than the other. Now let's talk about the law of triangle inequality. This law states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side. The best way to understand why this is true is to imagine what if the length of two sides of the triangle were to equal the length of the third side of the triangle? You just get two lines. If side x and side y were to add to the exact same length as side z, then the triangle would have no height. It would just be a flat line. So that would not work because that would not be considered a triangle and it would be expelled from triangle land. Well, now that we've covered all the laws that the triangles obey, let's practice the most important thing. Let's see how these laws apply to real SAT questions. I'm going to give you a chance to test your skills against two SAT triangle questions. You now have one minute to complete the problem. Drop kick it, yo!
The law of 180 states that the sum of the angles of any triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So, looking at our first triangle on the left, I know that angles x plus y plus z is going to equal 180 degrees. Next, let's look at the right triangle. Since it is a right triangle, and we know this because of that little box symbol on the bottom left, we know that V plus W plus 90 is equal to 180. That means that V plus W is then equal to 90. This problem is asking us to find the average of all these angles, so we do not need to find the individual value of the angles. Just add them all up and divide by 5, since there are 5 angles total. So 180 plus 90 divided by 5 is equal to 54 degrees. Making E the correct answer. Cool? Okay, let's move on to question number 2. This one's a little trickier. Okay team, time is up. How'd you do? Did you rule that question or did it rule you? Remember, all the questions in this video series are medium level, so don't worry if you think they're too hard for you right now or too easy for you right now because we will practice questions that are perfectly suited for your level in all of our live workshops. In any case, let's go over the answers together now. Okay, so you have a square inscribed inside another square. How do you figure out the area of the inside square? Well, if you notice, the inside square sides actually form triangles with the outside square. And not just normal triangles, but right triangles. That means we can use Pythagorean's theorem to figure out the length of the side of the square. Yes! You can see that one side equals 2, making the other side equal 6 minus 2, or 4. Plug that into our equation as a and b to get... 2 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. 20 equals c squared, so c must equal the square root of 20. So you get the length of one side of the square. It's a square root of 20. To find the area of the square, simply square it to get 20 for the area of the shaded portion. 20 is correct.